Well, good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful fall morning. We've actually been above normal temperature wise for the last few days, back up into the 70s, which has been beautiful. Let's start the day by letting out all of the animals and seeing how everybody's doing. Morning turkeys. Now our young flock of chickens here and the last time we showed you these guys we still had a fence one of the electric netting fences around here so that we could train them to go back in this coop at night while well, they have learned where to go at night and we've removed the fence so they have free range of the whole homestead here they're having a great time Our older hen right here, she's all black. She's just coming out of a really heavy molt. She was basically naked for a couple of weeks. It was kind of funny, but she's getting her feathers back. All the rest of these hens haven't even started laying yet, but they're gonna start any day now, I think. They're a beautiful bunch. Good morning pigs, how are you guys today? Get your breakfast. These are the two remaining pigs that we're raising for meat this year. They are growing really well, but we still have our three breeders as well. Morning, Myrtle. <laughs> you gotta wait till I pour it. She tries to eat out of the bucket before I can even pour her feed. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, Mildred. We sure are happy with these Idaho pasture pigs. Hope is doing a great job raising these two calves. We do give her some grain every morning just to make sure her milk production is staying up, but she still has plenty of grass to eat as well. We haven't had to feed any hay yet, which is really nice. A lot of the farmers around us have had to start feeding hay already, but we're trying to hold off a little bit longer until we get some really cold weather. Now this is something different than you've seen. We have one of our temporary fences here for this flock of chickens and our three ducks here. Come on ducks, 
Good morning. Here you go. Okay. There were a couple things we were really excited about when we bought this additional land and expanded our homestead. We were excited to be able to have a big flock of chickens that roamed all over this area, could eat as many bugs and as much grass and foliage as they wanted. We were also excited that those chickens then could also dig through cow patties, eat up any extra grain that didn't get uh, digested, and all of the fly larvae. We were so happy about that. And the chickens actually did that. They started exploring not only Hope's cow patties, but also the beef cows that we have here. They were scratching through all of their patties and really getting rid of a lot of that insect larva. But our cows go all over the place, which is fantastic, except that our chickens also followed. We were having chickens just kind of everywhere over all of this land. And because of that, it took, it in, took them into places that weren't very secure for them. We've had four ducks go missing and now three chickens go missing from predators during the day. We've assumed that that has been from coyotes, but we really just don't know for sure. Each one of our paddocks for the cows is about 10 to 20 acres each, and that's just too much for these chickens to be roaming and not have a secure place to go to get away from predators. We've kind of lived in a bubble in the last two areas. We, you know, we had an urban, urban homestead in the Phoenix area, which had an acre and a quarter of fenced land. We never had problems with predators there. And then we moved to Missouri and bought a piece of property that was about that's about 15 acres. That's where our home is, and that's where we have a small flock of chickens. There's so much hustle and bustle right where those chickens are that we don't have any problems with predators there, not much anyway. So it's been kind of a learning experience and an eye-opener as we've expanded the homestead and gained more land that we really need to protect these chickens here. So we've needed to take some extra precautions. We brought over this electric netting and for now we're just keeping them in this small area until we can figure out a permanent solution. Well next we need to go check on all of the beef cows. They pretty much take care of themselves except we need to just go every day and count them and make sure that they are still all here. Nobody's found a hole in a fence anywhere and escaped. We should have 10 of them. Now, Sarah was just talking to you guys about predators and you know, the predators coming up onto the farm part of the property. Now that my mom and dad are here and are starting to get settled in, there's a lot more uh, commotion here all the time. People just around more. And so hopefully that will also help keep some of the predators down. I see the cows laying under a tree over here. Let's take a walk over and see if all 10 of them are there. Morning cows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Well, it looks like they're all here. Soon we will need to start feeding hay to all of these cows because we are getting a little low on grass for them. Now with these 10 cows, our plan is to feed one of the big round bales of hay every three to four days. Uh, we think that that will get us through the winter and we think that that will be enough feed for them. But they're all looking good. They're getting really used to us being here. Uh, they're used, they're getting used to us taking care of them instead of the previous owner, which is nice. And they're just happy. They have lots of room. The paddock that they're in right now is the largest paddock of them all and provides everything that they need for a good life. So we need to head back to the house. We still have a lot of the lard to render from the pig that we processed the other day. We're going to show you guys the process for actually turning the fat from the pig into lard and getting that ready to put in the fridge so we have lard all winter for the family.
So the project for today is to remove all this back fat from the skin of the pig that we processed just a couple of days ago. We've had these in the refrigerator staying cold and today's the day that we are going to take the fat, this is back fat, off of the skin to render for cooking for the rest of the year. Now this back fat or the back lard is one of two types of lard that is on a pig. The internal fat, the internal lard is called leaf lard and it is a wonderful type of lard that can be used for baking, for pie crusts, for pastries. The difference is that lard doesn't have any type of pork flavor. This back fat will have some pork flavoring so it's best for frying, for uh, pan frying, deep frying, those kinds of right. things. It's wonderful, wonderful fat for those types of cook for that type of cooking. So our job today is to basically almost fillet all of this fat from the skin and then we're going to put it into bowls and then after we're all done with that we'll take it in the house and we'll actually render it down. So we're also going to be making sure that if there are any bits of muscle tissue, any meat, we're going to take that off. We don't want that in our rendering pot in the house. That will affect how long the lard will last in the refrigerator and that will also add to that stronger pork flavor. So we've cut all of the back fat off of the skin. We had two pieces of skin like you had seen, two different pieces. And we ended up getting two bowls about this size full of fat. Now we're gonna cut these up into smaller pieces, removing any bits of meat that are in there. The meat cannot go in when we're rendering the lard. It will change the flavor too strongly to taste like pork. You want it to be as neutral as possible. Uh, but also, if any of the meat bits end up in with your lard, it can make it go rancid or it could mold fast. Uh, so Kevin and I are going to work on that together. We're going to chop these into smaller pieces and put them in a crock pot bowl. You can also grind this up in like a meat grinder. Uh, the reason why you're cutting these into smaller pieces is just so that they render faster. We're gonna be cooking this in the crock pot on low until the, the fat melts away enough to uh, drain it off with, you know, ladle it off and uh, we'll put it into jars after we strain it. Now we wanted to take just a minute to talk to you guys as well about lard in general. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about lard, about whether or not it's good for you, bad for you. If you eat a lot of lard, is it, you know, are you going to die of a heart attack within a couple months? Um, the truth is, if you are making homemade lard, it is actually quite good for you. Uh, the lard that you purchase in the store, on the other hand, is quite different. Home rendered lard, as you can see, is just pork fat. And, well, it's considered fresh lard, right? There's a difference between fresh lard, which is what we're making, and processed or lard from the store. Right. The, the lard from the store goes through a process called hydrogenation, which changes the oils in the, in the fat. They either add extra oils, sometimes like cottonseed oil or other hydrogenated oils, to it, or they actually put the lard itself through the hydrogenation process, and they do that to make it shelf stable. You'll notice when you buy lard in the store, uh, it doesn't need to be refrigerated. It can just sit on the shelf and it never goes bad, or at least it takes a very long time for it to go bad. That's because they have changed the oils to hydrogenated oils, which are very bad for you. Now, many people who make fresh lard like we are doing, and like our grandmas and great grandmas that made lard like this, they would keep this on the shelf. This is relatively shelf stable, 
but if you're wanting to prolong the life of your home rendered fresh lard, you'll want to put it in the refrigerator. You can also freeze it. Right. We now, if you have a nice cool root cellar or somewhere like that, sure. that would be a good place for it as well. Right. Well, we will actually be refrigerating ours. Uh, if we have a lot of lard from these three pigs, I'll probably go ahead and freeze some of it and then take it out of the freezer and put it in the refrigerator as we need it. In recent history, the medical community has been changing its mind about whether or not animal fats are good for you or bad for you. For a long time now, probably a hundred years now, they've been saying that animal fats are bad for you and vegetable fats are better for you, like margarine and vegetable oils. And that actually is starting to become not true. Well, it would never was true. <laughs> they're just starting to prove that it's not true. Right. What they're actually finding now is that animal fats like rendered fresh lard that hasn't been hydrogenated is actually good for you. And lard, fresh lard, is actually a really great source of vitamin D. And these animal fats are fantastic for brain development for small children and babies and overall good for adults as well. Now the other thing about home rendered lard versus store-bought lard is that it has a very good mix of saturated and unsaturated fats. In general, unsaturated fats are better for you, but you really want a mix of those in your diet, saturated and unsaturated. Fresh lard also has the correct ratio of omega-3s and omega-6s to make it quite healthy for you. So uh, you should really research it. Uh, there's been a lot of misconceptions about lard, and most of those revolve around the store-bought lard and, uh, you know, the processes that those go through. So if you have a chance to either buy some pork fat uh, from a local butcher, a lot of times this is considered waste to them and they'll sell it super cheap, you can take it home and render it. Or if you raise your own pigs, it's really worth looking into. crock pot full of the cut up pieces of lard, the fat. The first one I already have in the crock pot. So I'm just going to add a couple tablespoons of water into this crock pot. It's just going to help prevent anything from sticking to the bottom of the crock pot. It will ultimately evaporate so you don't need to worry about it becoming incorporated into your fat. And we're going to put this on low heat so this can start melting. In about an hour or so, I'm gonna come back and stir all of this up, just kind of assess how it's doing. I'm always gonna keep it on low. But as the fat starts melting, I'll start ladling it out. When I get to that point, I'll come back and show you how I'm gonna label it out and strain out any of the bits that might be in there. And we can see the fat start filling up one of our jars, which is so exciting. I said in another video that we've been out of lard for a long time, several months, and we miss it. The kids are even excited to have it back in the kitchen. They help me with a lot of the cooking and the baking around here, and they understand the value of having some great lard in the kitchen. Now I get a lot of questions when I talk about lard or in my other lard rendering videos. What on earth do you use lard for? On our homestead, we use two very sustainable types of oil or fat for cooking. One is butter that we get from the cream from our dairy cow, and the other is this lard. We primarily use those two things in our cooking and baking. So the lard can be used for uh, sauteing vegetables, um, greasing cake pans or casserole pans. The leaf lard, which I haven't gotten to this point yet, will be used for pie crusts, uh, baking that I don't want to taste a little bit uh, like pork. Really anything that you would use vegetable oil for, we are using lard or butter. It's a fantastic substitute and for us, 
it is, it is a sustainable source of oil or fat. Now we do buy for salad dressings and things like that, either olive oil or avocado oil. But as we have more and more of our own sustainable oils like butter and lard, the less we have to buy at the grocery store. So it's a fantastic thing for us. Well, it's been about an hour and 45 minutes since these have been cooking down. Let's take a look at what they look like, stir them up a little bit, see how much of the fat has melted. Now I've been keeping the lid just um, off of the top a little bit so that the, um, the steam, the water can evaporate. But let's just take a look. We have a little bit of the lard, the liquid lard pooling at the bottom. But we're just gonna stir this up really well. Distribute that heat. And then we'll just keep cooking it for a little while longer before we start taking out some of the liquid fat. We'll do this for both of these crock pots and check back on it in an hour or so. Well, it looks like the lard has melted quite a bit and is ready to be ladled out into jars. Why don't you come and take a look at what it looks like. It's nice and clear, melted lard. So let's get set up to start ladling some of this out. I'm just gonna use a wide mouth quart jar. This is what we keep it in. I'm putting in a canning funnel just so that I don't spill it everywhere. I'm gonna be straining it through this uh, strainer here, just to make sure there aren't any bits or impurities that get in there. Right now it's clear, but as it cools, it will turn white. any of these bits that get caught up in the strainer, I'll just put back in the pot. Looks like there is some ready to come out of here too. I'll at least be able to fill up this first quart jar and I might be able to get another one started. So you guys get the idea. I'll just continue doing this over and over until all of the lard is out of the pieces. Um, I'm gonna be putting these in the refrigerator. I'll let them cool a little bit, but once they're kind of cool, I'll put them in the refrigerator to finish off and they'll be just a nice, gorgeous white. We'll come back after it's all done to show you how much we got from these two crock pots so you have an idea of how much we'll get. So here is our beautiful lard that we rendered yesterday. I actually continued rendering the lard until about 10.30 last night. There is still a tiny bit more in the crock pots, but overnight I turned off the heat so that it wouldn't continue cooking. As it cooks, it changes the flavor of the lard and it changes the color to kind of a yellowish, maybe light tan color. You can see how gorgeous white this is and that's because I was rendering this as it was cooking. So I'll be able to take off maybe another cup or so uh, that is still in the crock pot this morning, but I'm just so pleased with the amount that we've gotten so far from these pigs. This is a, a wonderful staple here in our family. You guys, I really hope that you enjoyed seeing how we produce a sustainable source of oil, cooking oil for our family with this lard. If you're enjoying our videos and video topics like these, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below so that you're notified of all of our new videos that come out. And the best way that you can help us here on the homestead is to share our videos on all your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.